Lord of your life. And what does that necessarily mean? You know, just because Jesus is my Savior doesn't necessarily mean that I've allowed Him to be Lord. You know, somebody could rush into a burning house and pull me out at the very last minute and save my life. I could say, they're my Savior. Savior with a small s. But that wouldn't necessarily mean that I've allowed them to be Lord of my life. Who is the Lord of your life? And what does that mean? Let's take a look here at Psalm 16. The psalmist has something to say to us about that. The first two verses of Psalm 16 says, Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. So who is the Lord of my life? The psalmist has made up his mind about that. He says, I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Now literally what he is saying, according to the Hebrew, original Hebrew language, is beside you, no good. Beside you, no good. So apart from you, O oh God, nothing is good. Now the Jews had this understanding that God made everything that is made. If it's there, he made it. Plus, everything that he made is good. Now that point is emphasized back in Genesis chapter 1. When God had finished the creation of all things, he looked at everything that he had made and he said, it is good, very good. So if God made all things, and all things that he made are good, can I just choose anything that I want and know that everything is going to work out good for me? Well, not exactly. Besides you, no good. So the psalmist is saying that it's possible that there are some good things in this world that God created that are not good. In other words, they're not good for me. Now, why is this so? Because it's possible to use something good out of God's will. So the text is almost implying that evil is simply good that is misused. So the psalmist says, I have come to the place where I'll let you decide what's good for me. Even if it's good in itself, if it's not part of your will for me, then it isn't good for me. It was good when you made it, but if it's not your will, it's not good for me. And I will let you, God, decide about that. Now that's what it means to let the Lord be the Lord of our lives. Besides you, no good. Anyone who is a Christian for any length of time at all has faced times when you have to choose between goods. Now, it may have been whether to go to law school or to med school or to no school. Or it may have been trying to decide between the blonde or the brunette or the redhead or the no head. Or it may be deciding between this job or that job or the other job. All of these things are good. I may want to go to law school, which is good. But God may want me to go into the ministry. Who is going to make the choice between goods for us? The psalmist says, I have come to the place where I know that good isn't good unless it's your will for me. You know, the difference between an unsaved person's life and the Christian life is what are they going to do about sins? But the question of a holy heart is what are we going to do about goods? The psalmist here is pointing at, at the heart of the very, the most crucial question in each of our lives. Will the Lord be my Lord? And will he decide what I choose to be good? Besides you, no good. And I'll let you decide what's good for me. Now let's take a look here at a minute at, at verses three and four. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. 
their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. So now the psalmist is saying, now that I've made that decision that you're Lord of my life, I feel like there's two groups of people in the world. And notice here how he differentiates between the two groups. The first group is the holy ones. And the second group are the ones who hasten after another or chase or run after another. Now all of our translations say there's, the sorrows will increase of those who run after other gods. But the word gods is not actually in the Hebrew text. It simply says runs after another. So our sorrows, the psalmist is telling us, our sorrows will increase if we run after anything that is outside the will of God, even if it's something good. It doesn't matter whether it's the blonde or the brunette or the redhead or the no head, or whether this job or that job or the other job, whatever it is, sorrows will increase for those who run after anything other than the will of God and his purposes for our lives. Besides you, no good and I'll let you decide what's good for me. So there's two groups of people. There's the holy ones, and those are the ones that seek what, and then there are those who, who seek what they want, and that's the basic difference between the two. Those in group one, let God decide what's good for them, while those in the other group have their own ideas and decide for themselves what's good for them. At the most basic level, that's the difference between the holy and the unholy. Now let's take a look quickly at verses five and six. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. So the psalmist here is not only testifying to God's goodness, he's also saying that the receiving of God's good purposes for us is dependent upon our allowing the Lord to draw the boundary lines for us. Now, most of us don't like to do that. We feel that if we let God draw the lines for us, we're gonna be missing out on something, or we're gonna get cheated out. It's gonna be no fun. He's gonna draw the lines in the wrong places. But the psalmist has a different idea. He knows better. He says, I let God draw the lines and it has been good and pleasant and B-E-A, beautiful. My translation, verse six. God, you are my portion, he says. If you will give yourself to me, God, you can take me anywhere you want to take me. You can do anything that you want to do with me. It doesn't matter what you do as long as I have you. My life is good. Let's take a look at verse 11. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now what are those pleasures that are in God's right hand? It's intimacy with the one who made you. And pleasure is ours forever if we'll let him be the Lord and let him choose what is good for us. Besides you, and no good, and I'll let you decide what's good for me.